I'm Natalie Jill. I'm author of Seven Day Jumpstart, and I'm a licensed master sports nutritionist and functional fitness trainer. And I am agreed to share my story with Dr. Kat and her audience today. So my deal is when I was 19, and I'm 44 years old now, so this is, my gosh, 25 years ago, I had made the decision at 19 to have breast implants. And I was a teenager, something I wanted. And this is when they were still relatively new. Um, and I was at the time concerned with saving money and I didn't do a lot of research, but I got them. And at the time I liked them until the problems started. And um, what happened with me is, I'm gonna take you through it, but it ended up being, my gosh, 25 years of a headache until I met Dr. Cat. So with the first set, um, the first thing that happened was within a year of getting those, I developed what's called capsular contracture. And that is when you form this scar tissue around the implant. And it can be painful and it's definitely disfiguring. So I went into another surgeon to have that fixed. And when they went in to fix that capsule, it had turned out the other one, the silicone had ruptured everywhere. So while I was under the knife in surgery, um, being in my early 20s when this was happening, they were fixing the capsule on one and having to take a liposuction to literally get out all of the goo and the silicone and everything else, which made it so they had to remove a lot of my, my actual breast tissue. So then I was given saline implants because at that time, silicone, there were some questions about it and I was given saline implants which um, were textured and it had basically like a salt water inside. And I wore those for a number of years but I always had rippling and I also had this separation because the capsular contracture kept coming back. So they would start getting harder and moving outward and I, I always described it as, they look like pecs, almost like a guy's muscle wood pecs. So I, I went through years of just hating these implants and thinking, what the heck, why did I ever get them? Not understanding that they could be fixed or better. Fast forward, I had my daughter. It was time to get them fixed. I was ready to do this. I had them replaced with some silicone again and pretty quickly got capsular contracture again right after. And the thing with capsular contracture is once you get it once, unless you keep up with it and remove the entire capsule, it's basically an infection that keeps spreading. So it could be as mild as it just looking funny or it can be as severe as what happens with me and it gets painful and it starts to create this hard cap around your implants which makes them like these hard balls that move outward. So I, I stayed with that for several years because I didn't want to go through another surgery. I didn't want to have to go through the downtime again. I was just sort of over these, the whole implant situation until about um, eight months ago when I just had had enough and they were starting to look really funny. I was really self-conscious about it. And I went to yet another surgeon um, in San Diego who really pretty much botched me. <laughs> it was a pretty bad situation. Um, I was recommended to him from uh, some friends. Um, I went in without doing a lot of research, just assuming my friends liked him. He was great. I came out of the surgery really looking funny. Um, one of them was drastically higher up and bigger than the other. Um, the other one was low down and pointing outward, so they looked funny. But what made matters worse is he told me that if I didn't take some serious time of working out, I was not gonna be able to fix it. It wouldn't remedy itself. So me, my, my life, my job is fitness and nutrition and I do DVDs and I'm on camera and this is my business and my life and not even just um, my business and my life, but it's, it's my outlet working out. Um, working out is huge for me. So my gosh, that was so stressful. So I, I gave it the time to heal that he asked me to and just as I was starting to get back into my workouts, it created all kinds of pain because the way he had cut my pocket and not gotten the capsular contracture and cut my muscle, working out became super painful. And for someone like me who is known for doing my pull-ups and my body weight exercises and my extreme moves, I couldn't do them anymore. I mean, I literally couldn't do them. I would cry at night about this because I would try to do a pull-up and my muscle, the rest of my muscle wanted to do it, but it was hurting so bad in my chest and in my shoulder and everything else that it was horrible. So. I just, I wanted the implants out. I was done. I was sick of it. I was mad at myself for getting them at age 19. I was mad at the years I'd gone through this. And I was even more mad that I had, you know, eight months ago gone through this whole other surgery, which was now not only just a waste of money, 
but was pretty much ruining my career in my eyes. So I was venting to my friend, uh, my really good friend, Natalie Min, who I just love, and she insisted that I go and see her friend, Dr. Kat, and I remember checking out Dr. Kat's Instagram and social media, and because I love social media, I was impressed by hers, and I loved reading what she wrote about and watching her visions. So I went into her, and the thing I loved most about her was that, first of all, she's a female, she's a mom, and she herself is super fit, and that may not sound important to, to you watching, but to me it was, because fitness and health is my life, and to know that she understood that and she was living the fit lifestyle and got it, that right away I liked her. And then to make things even stronger, she spent so much time on the consult with me. My gosh, I think we spent two hours on that consult that first day, and I could tell she really cared. She heard me, she understood what my concerns were. I didn't wanna look like I had these big obnoxious you know, breasts. That was definitely not what I wanted. I wanted to get rid of this capsular contracture, and most importantly, I wanted to work out again. And I even asked her, should I take them out? And we weighed options on everything. So I felt like she was the first one that really listened to me and really understood. And not to mention when I checked out her credentials, they were just like completely impressive, completely blew my mind. I mean, like over the top impressive. So it was done. I didn't, I just wanted to do it. My husband was with me. We agreed. I right away decided to do the surgery. And I'm going to tell you that I just did this two weeks ago and I'm already so happy. For one, I look completely normal um, right now. She feels that she really mastered this capsular contracture problem and that it's gonna likely be gone. She's told me I'm gonna be able to work out again. In fact, she gave me the clear today to start doing some mild stuff, but at six weeks I should be able to do everything again. And, and we did do a lot of, a lot of switches. We, they're now over the muscle. They're now a shaped, more natural looking implant and they're ones that can't rupture. They're made from a material that won't rupture. And I, I just, I don't feel self-conscious anymore about it. And I'm finally open to sharing my story about this. So what's my advice now? Because first of all, I wanna say I'm not against plastic surgery at all. I think for many women, uh, many men, if that's something you've done your research on and really want and it's gonna help you, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm not against it at all. What I am gonna encourage everybody is one, really take your time and research, really understand what you're doing, understand what doctor you're going to and what the consequences of things are. Because I did not bother to learn all of that at age 19. I was a teenager not paying attention. I did not, I was looking at price. I wasn't looking at who is this doctor, what is their training and how is this gonna affect my lifestyle. Find a doctor that is actually listening to you and that you can relate to. Somebody that understands what your goals are, you know, outside of just the visual appearance. Like, what is your lifestyle? What I loved about Dr. Kat is she took her time to really question and understand who I am as a person, you know, what my roles are, you know, what my job is, what was gonna make me happy, and she really looked at all the options with me. So, you know, if you had asked me, a few weeks ago, if I would recommend implants, I would have said, heck no. <laughs> My gosh, after what I went through, I would have said, no way. But after going to her and being fixed and feeling normal and knowing I can work out again, I'm gonna have to say that, I, don't, I can't say that no, I wouldn't do it at, right now. I would just say, make sure you're researching your doctor and if there is any way, listen, I don't recommend people lightly, but I'm gonna tell you, I will not let anybody touch me but Dr. Kat now. Like I'm completely sold that she is the one. Not only that, I had my surgery with her and she was, I had her personal cell phone. She checked in on me. She was there checking me in before surgery, going through every little last step. She got to know my family. She was calling me, texting me every day to make sure I was okay. She came in on the weekends. Oh my gosh, she came in on Easter Sunday to see me. She's just absolutely incredible, um, compassionate, educated doctor. So one of the things that I like to emphasize with my patients is that the very, very first breast surgery you have is the most important. Because once the pocket becomes contaminated, it's very difficult to correct. Capsular contracture has been associated with bacterial contamination of the implant. So in my primary breast augmentation surgeries, I do everything possible to keep the pocket as absolutely clean as possible. The second thing is, with all my silicone gel breast augmentation surgeries, I use a special device called a Keller funnel, which basically is a sterile funnel, and the implant goes from its sterile container into the funnel and directly into the pocket with almost a completely non-touch technique. 
And the last thing is when I'm making the pocket, I keep it completely clean. I try not to have any blood in the pocket. I don't stuff gauze in the pocket. Right, when I'm cutting the muscle, I make sure to grab it and cauterize it before I cut it. And it's really almost a bloodless surgery because I think anything in the pocket, blood, char, gauze, creates a reaction from the body that could contribute to capsular contracture. In Natalie's case, some of the complications she had with her implants really are almost a non-issue because there's so many better products out there now compared to, you know, 20 some years ago. For example, the silicone gel implants that are most commonly used now are a cohesive gel, which means that they're not loose silicone or really runny like the types that Natalie was talking about in her when in one of her older surgeries where silicone was loose and gooey all over the place. Um, the cohesive gel implants, even if they rupture, the gel tends to stick together so it doesn't run loose all in the pocket. The second thing is that the saline implant that she previously had where there's lots of rippling, um, you can see the implant, that is less of a concern with the silicone gel implants. The kind of implant that I used for Natalie is what's known as a gummy bear implant. And so you can see that it's actually a textured implant. It has an anatomic shape. They're not for everyone because they definitely are a little bit more firm than the silicone gel implants. But with someone like Natalie who has very advanced caps for contracture, and I'm also going to be putting the implant on top of the muscle, I wanted to use one that had a nice cohesive shape to minimize rippling. For Natalie, she had had multiple previous surgeries all in the same pocket. They were continually going back in, under the muscle, trying to take out some scar tissue, clean it out over and over again. And in advanced cases like that, really that pocket needs to be completely changed. Just going back in is, has a minimal success when trying to prevent recurrence of capsular contracture. When I do my consultations, I take everything into consideration someone's profession, their job, their hobbies, their sports they play, because all of those things make a big difference when you're thinking about the patient long-term in their life. For Natalie, I know that her job and her profession is to do fitness, and she does a lot of pull-ups and uses her body weight, so to tell someone like her that you can't exercise or use your pec muscles ever again is is almost ridiculous. It's, it's like telling someone they can never work again, which doesn't make any sense. So taking into consideration everything, her job, her concerns, what look she was hoping to achieve, and all her previous surgeries, I actually reviewed all of her op notes very detailed so I could understand what was going on with her anatomy. The best solution for Natalie was to remove the implant from its old pocket, repair the muscle by sewing it back down onto the chest wall, and making a brand new clean pocket on top of the muscle and using a shaped textured implant that would create minimal rippling, that would reduce the chance of capsular contracture and also any rupture, and also create a very beautiful teardrop shape. And she's done absolutely amazing. She'll be able to fully exercise and use her muscles without any restrictions once she's fully healed. And hopefully this will be the last surgery that she needs and she'll go on with her life and continue to do what she does best, which is fitness and videos and inspiring people um, and not have to think about her breasts anymore. Just enjoy them and look amazing.